Hey, bro, you got to try these. No, thank you, bro. Uh-uh. Hey, you're the older brother. You definitely got to try them first. Hey, Sorry, hey, bro. hey, mm -hmm. guys, what, what, what are you fighting about? Hey, what's up, Tim? Hey, Tim. What's going on? What's, what's with the jelly beans? We got some jelly beans we want you to try, actually. Okay. These here, are, there's two different types. There's kinds that'll make you happy because they taste good. Okay. And others that are just straight up nasty. <laughs> jelly beans that'll make me happy and uh, nasty. That, that gives me an idea. Yo, bro. I don't know if I like that look on Tim's face. Mm -mm. He's so happy and we just can't stand it. Your host of Nightlife, Tim Bergen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk and Kellen, and as always, the witty and wonderful Sydney. Hey, thank you for joining us for Nightlife. What a very happy team we have here. And speaking of that, today's theme is happiness. Now, what makes you happy? On the internet, there are thousands of kitten and puppy videos, and that makes some people happy. Good conversation with friends and family, a great meal, makes some people happy. And accomplishing a task, well, that makes others happy. Who do you think the happiest people in the world are? Do you think it's Americans because of our standard of living? Maybe you think it's those from Central America or those from the Caribbean because of the great weather. Europeans because of their long history and great architecture. Eastern Asians because of all their gadgets and technology. Well, if you guessed any of these, you'd be wrong. If you're living in Iceland, you're the happiest people on earth. Iceland, go figure. Now, you might think either it's the natural hot tubs or simply their brains are frozen from all the cold weather, but it's really neither. It seems that money, good weather, nor technology really are the keys to happiness. Psychologists studying Icelanders have found that it is primarily three things that makes them happy. They have a greater sense of community. No one's left to fail. If someone is in trouble, the whole community supports and encourages them until they get through it. They overcome stuff. They don't place blame, they accept responsibility, and they begin to work to overcome their struggles. And they have this stubborn optimism that they believe things will always get better. Well, ready to pack up and move to Iceland? Anyone? Guess not. <laughs> Might be a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Listen, being happy, for most psychologists, is nothing more than spending a little bit of time every day doing something for others. On today's show, Christy Watts is here to teach us to talk yourself happy. Is it possible? Well, Sydney will find out. Are you ready for another great show? Kurt and Kellen, I want you to take us out with a happy song, and then we'll be right back after this. been somewhere it seems awkward to show that you're happy like in an elevator or standing in line at a store well for one man in Belgium he went the extra mile to spread happiness on a subway take a look
I don't know about you, but when I'm watching that, I can't really keep a straight face, and that all was part <laughs> of a social experiment for a Coca-Cola commercial, so I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> it's hysterical. I mean, you can't, you literally can't help but laugh. You're, you're hearing him, hearing him there, and that is funny. That is very funny. Now, did you laugh the first time you saw it? As you're seeing, because this was the first time I saw it. I was cracking up. Yeah, I was laughing the whole, like, the whole time, like, <laughs> keeping a straight face, and I'm like, oh my gosh, laughing. But it really shows that laughter, you know, is contagious, and happiness really, you know, begins with a smile, and it makes you laugh. And <laughs> well, laughter does good like a medicine. And, and speaking of that, maybe maybe I can get you to laugh here. Why don't you come on over? Okay. Come on over. I, I got the twins over here, and we want to we play a game, and hopefully... Hopefully you guys will find this humorous. Hopefully you'll laugh. Hopefully we'll have a good time. Now, now you guys had this idea, so so this is, this is on you. When you gave me the the jelly beans at the beginning of the show, have you ever have you ever been bean bamboozled? Well, our producers actually thought that it would make them happy to have the nightlife team play this little game. Well, you, you guys, this is this is how we're going to play. Okay. Uh, the producers ask us all to submit these personal questions about mm -hmm. the, our likes and our dislikes. And I'm going to read the cards to you. And so you have to try to guess who the card describes. Now, if you win, now you gotta, you got to hit your bell real quick. And if you win, you get to choose somebody else that they've got to try one of the beans. And they'll spin the spinner, which tells them what color bean that they've got to choose. And, and stuff is like nasty. It's like, like uh, uh, vanilla or rotten eggs. And it's like uh, toothpaste and tutti frutti. It's... Nasty, nasty stuff. And so if you win, but if you lose, if you guess wrong, then you've got to spin and take the bean. Okay, you guys got the rules down? Got, got it. Okay, ready for the first one? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, you sure? Okay, the likes are uh, WWE wrestling, techno dance music, and the dislike is raw onions. Who would that be? Kellen. You got it right. Yes. <laughs> Woo okay, who who gets to take the nasty bean? Which <laughs> Helen. Woohoo! All right, spin, buddy, spin. See what see which color we're going for here. Okay, what are our choices? The choice is coconut or spoiled milk. Ooh, okay, you know. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Oh. And we've got we have. If it's too bad, you can spit it out in the cup. But which did you get? I got coconut. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm moving right along. He's <laughs> feeling the spirit. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Felt tip pens, cheese are the likes. Dislikes are people chewing ice. Who is it? you? Nope. Oh. oh. <laughs> You just like jelly beans, don't you? You're just you're just into the jelly bean thing. That was Sydney. 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 Okay, go ahead and spin. Ooh. Let's see. I'm, it's chocolate pudding or canned dog food. Ooh. So it's a dark brown one. Yeehaw. Uh, brrr, drum roll, please. He's like praying for the chocolate the pudding. Of champions. Uh. <laughs> here, here, brother. Here I go. I'm gonna take it like a man. <laughs> okay. Woo! Yeehaw! Okay, next one. Moving right along. Before, before the gag reflex kicks in. Okay. Likes Netflix and pizza. Dislikes slow drivers on the Parkway. Kirk. It is. <laughs> Her, got to spin, buddy. Oh. Oh. Peach <laughs> or barf? <laughs> oh. Ah. oh, Lord. Nasty, nasty, nasty. What'd you get? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Take Don't it like do a it. You got to play. Like you got to play the rest Take of the show. Like you know. <laughs> 
oh, we're laughing at somebody else's pain. This is a good, good Christian witness for all of you out there. Yeah, Sydney loves this game. Okay, next. That's it. Okay, leg press at the gym, indie electronica music are the likes, and dislikes are people chewing ice. That's you. Nope. <laughs> I thought you told me you like dance music. That's oh Sydney. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, brother. <laughs> this is killing me. Uh, uh, Caramel corn or moldy cheese? Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> moldy cheese. Here we go, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These okay. Are bad. I'm still bad. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we've got about uh, uh, 20 seconds left. Right. So, guys, why don't you, uh, being that you've all been troopers, why don't you spin one and I'll I'll eat whatever whatever uh, color you choose. And I'm praying and fasting right this moment that it's not something super nasty. Allow me to do it. <laughs> oh, they gonna... keep shooting until let's let me get something <laughs> really cool. nasty. We're, we're gonna pick one for you. We got <laughs> strawberry banana smoothie. Okay. Or Dead fish. Oh. oh. So which which one is that? Okay, That's so it's the solid the solid orange, orange one. What and red one. Yeah, this got one. The red. Yeah. These. I think it's this these. one. This one. Mm. Oh man. That's, Here we go. Must. Oh lord. <laughs> Turn this dead fish into something <laughs> decent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While we try here <laughs> to take a look, well, while we take a look at this, it makes me oh. happy. Probably to see other people happy. I mean, when I wake up in the morning, if everybody's living their life to the fullest and enjoying um, the moment each day, this life's precious. It's short, and we have to enjoy it. And that everybody gives back. Everybody gives back to each other. Um, I think doing things that I'm passionate about probably makes me the most happy. Uh, working with people that are great, uh, having good friendships, close family, all of that makes me happy. I would say the beach, but we don't have beaches out here for us to go surfing. So food would be my second next to my family, yeah. Does snow make you happy? Uh, no, it makes me sad. <laughs> it does make me sad. Um, even as I pay my taxes every year, you know, I feel good because it's taking care of somebody else. Okay, paying taxes makes you happy? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm also. I don't know if you're a sick person or. or... <laughs> I'm also an officer in the military. I know the taxes take care of the, the military, but paying taxes take care of these roads we're on. Takes care of the people out, you know, that are less fortunate than us. So I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. I think you can find happiness through prayer. If you pray all like anything that's bothering you, if you pray on it enough, then it can make you happy. Because you'll be nine times out of ten, if you pray hard enough, you'll get the results that you're asking for in your prayers. You gotta get that dead fish taste. I got stuck oh. in my tooth. I'm glad those people were happy. But uh, oh. ah. Ugh. us. Do, do you guys know where Sydney went? We're the ones that had the the jelly beans. Where would she at? Hey everyone, I know I should be really focusing on nightlife right now, but I can't. Chrissy Watts is in the building. You know, talk yourself happy. I gotta go. I gotta give her this gift bag. I really gotta go. Christy, hi. I'm so glad I got to catch you before hi, you go. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Sydney. Oh, Hello. Whitney. It's wonderful to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Can I talk to you for a couple of minutes? Of course, of course. I'm just waiting on my ride. Awesome. You were such a phenomenal woman of God. I really, really look oh. up to you. So I appreciate just having the time to like sit and talk to you for oh a couple Oh my goodness, how sweet are you? Girl, go what do you want? Ask me whatever you want. Well, I love the title of your new book, Talk Yourself Happy. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. How did that all come about? Um, it was in a really hard time of my life where um, everything was challenging. You know, it's funny. I worked at the 700 Club for about 14 years, and I was always known as the upbeat one who laughed and this and that. Because that's normally, that's, you know, happiness is, comes easy, you know, for me. But then I went through a really, really hard time, Sydney, where um, you name it, it happened. And I couldn't find my happy. And I was trusting in God and, and, and relying on God and praying to God, but yet everything that I wanted to happen, nothing was happening the way I wanted it to. Has that ever happened to you? Yes, many, right? many times. Girl, <laughs> right, girl. Right? <laughs> so anyways, I got to a point where I was so down 
my mom called me, we were having a conversation about something else. And the more I focused on myself, the more down and depressed mm -hmm. I was. And then I started thinking about some, a situation with my sister. And I, I, I told my mom, I said, well, mom, remind her when the Lord did this, remind her when the Lord did that. And the more I reminded myself and started to talk about the good things of God and what he'd done in the past and reminded myself of just God's faithfulness in my life in the past that I'm like, if he did it before, He'll do it again, right? And all of a sudden that spirit of heaviness and weight started to lift up. And the next thing you know, I started to laugh. And I thought, oh my goodness, girl, I just talked myself happy. And my mom said, girl, I just talked myself happy too. And that was a, a, the principle for our book, which is it's not just the words that we speak, but making sure that the words that we speak line up with the word of God mm -hmm. as we remind ourselves the goodness of God and that regardless of our circumstances or our situation, we know that God is a faithful God. Amen. And yeah. you know, I follow you on social media and something yeah. you shared recently that mm -hmm. I absolutely loved is you talked about when you were a little girl, your third grade teachers had some negative words over girl, you. Girl, yes. What do you want to know? I want to know it all. Okay. <laughs> Well, in that particular moment, I just posted the fact that I'd, I'd, I'd written my first book, and which is huge because I thought, man, God, you are so awesome. And it took me back to the time when I was in third grade. And when I was in third grade, I had a teacher who uh, told my parents, you know, Christy's not very smart. She's not very bright. She, she, you know, she can't really read. She's not a strong writer. Um, let's put her in all these rem remedial classes. And, you know, she's not really going to amount to a lot of anything because she's slower. And my parents took that word and threw it away. They did not pick up that word. They threw it away. They said, wait a minute. I'm not going to take the word of this woman. I'm going to take the word of the Lord and who he's created her to be. And so they spoke life into me and encouraged me and said, you are more than a conqueror. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Christy, you are the head and not the Amen. tail. You have a wonderful plan and purpose for your life. And as parents, we're going to help you walk out that plan and purpose. And what was so neat is not that they had to, but they had me tested. And Sydney, can I tell you something cool? What happened? Look, this is in third grade. And in third grade, they tested me and I tested at a sixth grade level. And the truth of the matter was, I was not, you know, dumb or slow or those words that they had tried to speak into my mm. life. I was bored. <laughs> I'm like, challenge me. I was bored. <laughs> so what was the lesson? The lesson that I learned is that we cannot take hold of every word that comes our way right. because every word is, is fickle because people are fickle. There's only one word that we got to hold on to, and that's the word of God because that word of God is truth and life. So, yeah. Man. Yeah. That's so powerful because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times, like, you know, as a kid, like people can speak a lot of things over, but it's just so amazing to see where you are now right. is that you didn't take that in and you showed that teacher. Right, <laughs> because here's the truth. The truth is we really do have to know who we are in Christ because the world will tell us one day we're too fat, we're too thin, we're too short, we're too tall, we're too dumb, we're too this, we're too that. Well, good Lord, what are we? You know, that's why we have to know who we are in Christ and that our identity is in Christ. And that's the whole concept of talking to yourself happy, knowing the truth of God's word and being happy in it. That's so awesome. And what would you say like to encourage someone, you know, who's in a transitional time, how mm -hmm. to talk themselves happy? It really isn't about your circumstances, but allowing God to work on your heart in the midst of your circumstances. And just, you know, we in the in in the church, we we throw out these lines all the time. God is faithful. Just trust in God. But the truth of the matter is. Do we know what faithfulness means? Mm. Do we know that faithfulness means that, that God is reliable and he's dependable, that he's steadfast, that he's unwavering, that if he said it, then he'll do it? If we understand the faithfulness of God, same thing with trust. How can you trust anybody unless you know them? We say, trust God, trust God, but how am I going to trust you or you trust me or me trust anybody mm. unless we know them, know the essence of them, the character of them. And the way to learn the character of God is even something as simple as learning the names of God, you know, because even the names of God give you an essence of who God is. And so for someone going in that transition place or someone going through the challenges of life, it's know God and to know him is to trust God and know that he is faithful, that if he said it, he's going to do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Christy, for yeah. taking this time to of talk course. with me and give me this gift bag. You gave me a gift! Yes! Girl! Oh, no. You just made me happy. And look, let me say this. It doesn't matter what it is. The, the thought that you cared for me enough to love me enough to think of me just made me happy. Hug me, girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> love you. Love you. Thank you, Sydney. Yes. Whew. Guys, I'm still fighting that nasty taste. It smells. Mm.
Kind of, I, it's almost like I smell it. Have you guys seen Sydney? She's still my rep. Hey. Hi, hi, hi. Where have you been? Sorry, we got a show to do. This I'm is sorry. live. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Tim. Okay, what was, what was up? I was talking to Chrissy. I had to give her a gift bag. Oh. Kind of had to, had to go. Sorry. Ooh, cool. What were you talking to her about? We're talking about happiness and transitioning into happiness and all those good things. Cool. Yeah. Well, that sounds like we need it after those jelly beans. Holy smoke. Hey, you guys ready for the news of the day? You guys yes, got sir. a special news of the day for us? Here's Kirk and Kellen with the news of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. Kellen, tell them. Today is National Sardine Day. And did you realize that sardines are one of the healthiest foods you can have? They promote bone and heart health. And I love them. I think they're delicious. Mmm. It's dead fish, guys. It's like the jelly beans. I'm not <laughs> that. That's all you guys. Uh, no. <laughs> that's you, you guys keep that over. even the smell. Smell smells smells rank. You know what? Terrible. Fish jelly bean uh, might not have been that bad. Yeah. Mm. You know what? I, we're I need to get out of here. Let's yeah. we're, we're gonna go to the break. We'll be right back after this. These are absolutely nasty, but one member of our team didn't have the opportunity that the rest of us had to be happy, I guess. So uh, guys, I need to get Sydney. Sydney, why don't you come on over? I, I need Sydney to choose one of these. So what, what color should she do? The green spotted one. Green spotted one, woo-hoo! You know what that is, that's, that's either uh, a juicy pear or a juicy booger. Mm. <laughs> this one, here we that go. That one, there you go. Help Let's see. Jesus. Let's see. Is she gonna be happy or miserable? <laughs> Pear. Pear. <laughs> oh, some people's kids. Some people's kids. Well, I'm happy for you. So the rest of us might not be happy, but I'm happy for you. Well, as you can see from the show, happiness is a choice. Those Icelanders live in a very cold place most of the year, but they're the happiest people on earth. By the way, the U.S. ranks 16th. The Icelanders are happy for really biblical reasons. Let's take a quick look again. They have a great sense of community and no one is left to fail. And if someone is in trouble, the whole community supports them and encourages them until they get through it. Well, it sounds an awful lot like something the Apostle Paul talked about when he said that we were the body of Christ. And if one part hurts, we all hurt. Said they also, they overcome stuff. They don't place blame, they accept responsibility, and they begin to work to overcome their struggles. Overcoming has made them grateful and a happy culture. And the Bible puts it this way, in everything, give thanks. They also have a stubborn optimism. They believe things will get, always get better. It sounds to me a lot like Romans 8:31. It says, if God's for us, who can be against us? You see, circumstances, situations, and people should not control our happiness. It's a choice we make because we believe that God really loves us and that he is always good and always faithful. Now, I know that can be a hard concept to grasp, but try it. What do you have to lose except being unhappy? Listen, if you're struggling right now, if the battle for joy, peace, or happiness is intense, call one of our prayer partners and allow them to pray with you and for you and start on a journey of being the way that you were meant to be. That better relationship with the Lord is the one, he's the one who loves you the most and loves you the best. All you need to do is call the number that's on the screen, 888-665-4483, and talk with one of our prayer partners. It'll make a change for you. Well, that's almost it for Nightlife tonight, and we'll see you the next time when we'll add a little bit more light into your night. Guys, you ready to take us out? Take a break Cause I'm a hot air balloon I could go to space With the air Like I don't care Baby, by the way Because I'm happy Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof hey. Clap along if you feel like happiness is Like that's what
what you want to do. Listen now. I heard the news talking this man. No offense to you, don't waste your time. 